Hello, this is Warlord, and we're going to build an iClone scene, complete with some characters. What I've done is load the lounge scene, and I'm not going to need everything that's in here, and it also has a, a night to daylight setting, so I'm just going to move the timeline scrubber over and move the starting point over to where we stay in the daylight. Then I'm going to turn off these light controls. Now, another thing I would like to do would be to get rid of some of the furniture. That's an individual item. We can just delete it. But I would like to keep some of this, just move it out of the way or make it where I can't see it. So what I'm going to do, first thing you'll notice is these are all parented to the table, which means if we move the table, we move all of these. So what I'm going to do right now is just detach them. When you parent it, you actually attach it uh, instead of parenting an iClone. So I'm going to detach it. And then I'm going to come into like this sofa here. And all I'm going to do with it basically is just turn it invisible as far as uh, in our workspace. And that's just so we can see what we're doing. Now, as far as the table goes, I'm just going to delete it and what's on the table. There's also a couple of small wine glasses there. Okay, now I've got the scene ready to load a character. So I'm going to come over here to Avatars. We're in G6. I'm going to double click and load Heidi. Now, for movement around, I'm going to select movement. I can move her with just the mouse or I can control Q and use gizmos. I'm just going to go back to the mouse for right now. We'll just kind of put her in a temporary place there. I'll move in a bit. And now I want her to sit. So what I could do with her selected is hit in and actually go in, grab the bone and push her down and put her in a sitting position. But then I'd have to deal with a lot of other stuff too. So I'm just going to control Z to undo that. And every time I undo something, you're going to see these lights pop on. I'm just going to turn them back off. What I want to do is right click with her selected, go to perform, and I'm going to go stand to sit. And I really only want the sitting position at the end. We're not going to worry about the dress, the physics, and all that. So what I want is this position right here. So now she's in it, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to remove object animation, and that now freezes her in this position. So now I'm ready to put her on the couch. However, if I move her to the couch right now with this timeline, with the scrubber anywhere but at the beginning, it's going to animate her moving to the couch. It's going to slide her to the couch. So what I need to do is make sure I go back to the beginning of my section, the beginning of the timeline, and then move her. Now we're ready to go ahead and load a second character. Now if we were to double click Mason right now with her selected, he would load over her. He would replace her. So you can use placeholder actors and then come in later and change them out with your actual characters and things. So what I want to do though is just load Mason. So I could click off of her and double click on him, or I can just drag and drop him into the workspace. Okay, and let's just leave him where he's at, and we want him to look at each other. So with Mason selected, I'm going to go over here to look at, pick target, head. There's also a slider down here for head and eye convergence. That way, in case you get a, a too much uh, turn of the head, you can slide it back towards more eye convergence. I want her to look at him, so I'm going to select her. Pick target under look at, and now she's looking at him. Now let's say I want to go ahead and animate her. With her selected, I'm going to go to the motion puppet, and I want her to retain that position. If I were to actually pick like female right here under idle, she would jump up into the position of this icon. But I want her to hold that position, so instead of under preset, I'm going to mask, I'm going to clear all the bones, all the areas, and I only want to activate the upper torso and the head. Let's preview that. And we're just wanting a little subtle motion, things like that. Now we could also come in here and change the speed of it. Let's go ahead and record that. So what we're doing right now is actually recording the animation to the character. And once that is finished recording, remember, it is very important to return to the beginning of the timeline again. And now what we're going to do is we're going to select Mason and we'll animate him using the motion puppet again. And let's see, go to male. I kind of want him to hold that stance, so I'm going to freeze out the legs and let's see what happens when we let him move everything else. Now I'm not real pleased with that. Let's select another one and let's clear the legs and lower torso and preview it. Okay, for a little motion, we'll just use this one. And so what I'm going to do is record, and then we'll record him.
Now, once this is finished, we've recorded the base motion for the characters. Now, I'm going to go ahead and return back to the beginning of the timeline. And then I'm going to switch cameras to the preview camera. And with Mason selected, I'm going to hit the home key so we can see uh, more about what we're going to do with the lip sync. And what we need to do is create a light here. So I'm going to create a point light. And we're not going to worry so much about good lighting as we are just getting it where we can see what's going on. Now the light uh, reference would not render even if I had left it on. It would not render in the final render. So I'm going to go ahead and select Mason. I'm going to go to Animation, Create Script. I'm going to load a WAV file. And this is going to be the voice file. It's going to do the lip sync. And right now what it's doing is analyzing and putting the lip sync into the character. Now we're finished with that. Another thing we can do, and just to show you, we won't really get into it here, but you can go in and you can change the lip sync, you can improve the lip sync. You can look under Visme, and I'll turn off what we don't need here. Let's open this up. And you can see right here are the phonemes. So, like some of these here, I don't know why they're here. They shouldn't be. It's probably with static in the file. All we really need is a none to start off with to make sure it's clear. Now, this is where he starts off with a TH. So, what I'm going to do is delete that. That was probably also caused by static. Double click. And right here, are the lips editor, as they call it, are the, are the phonemes. So, you can just hit TH. So, you could go in here and correct some of it. Uh, if your recording wasn't good or things like that. So there, there's quite a bit of versatility here. We're not exactly going to get into that right now. But this is how you would get a voice loaded and how it would do its automatic lip sync. And then you can go in and improve it if you want to. And now from here we'll go back to the camera. And what we have done so far is uh, put voice sync to him, animate both characters, bring them into the scene. Now we're going to take a quick look at just using Indigo to render a still out of this shot right here. So what I'm going to do is go down to the Indigo tab. We're not going to get into changing out uh, materials. There's all kinds of things you can do with Indigo. But what I want to do right now is I don't want to transfer the point light. There's that point light I created right in front. That will actually show up and render in Indigo. So we have to work around that. And in this particular case, I don't need it. I'm just going to turn it off. And then I'm going to come down here to the bottom. And I'm going to up my super sampling to 4. And I'm going to use GPU acceleration. So what we're going to do now is hit the Indigo button. And let it pull up the interface. Once the interface loads, I'll come back. Okay, now the interface is coming back. It's loading up. And one thing about it, since this is a separate program, you can go do whatever you want with iClone if you feel confident you're not going to make any more changes or anything. But once you shut this renderer off, then you may lose the ability to uh, go back and render with it if you do uh, turn iClone off or use it for something else. Now, as you can see, we have it going now. It's rendering. And what I'm going to do is let this render for a little bit. And then once again, we'll come back. Okay, we're back. Now, this has been about almost an eight-minute render up to this point, and it still has some rendering that it needs to do. There's some changes that probably could be made. Uh, you can see some of the shadows aren't quite rendered out. But this does give you an idea of what this renderer can do. I'm going to go ahead and stop the render, update the image so we make sure we have all the rendering available that's used. And what I'm going to do right now is show you over here there are some settings. And I'm not going to say that they necessarily uh, would be settings you're going to use on every photograph or every image, I'm sorry. But these are settings that you can play with and change the looks after you've rendered it. So as you can see, we're getting some different looks just right there. And then we can go back to the way it was rendered standard. And brighten it up a little. 
play with the ISO some. And as you can see right there, we get totally different renders just by going in and changing things or even using the presets and whatnot. Now, I kind of like this soft render. And I'm just going to play with the settings a little here. See what we can get. And now, once you've got what you want, and of course, you could have done this at every place. You can save these however many times you want. We could have saved this before we changed. We could have saved this. We can save it now. Uh, what we're going to do is just come up here to save image. And then you just pick the format you want it in. And then name it. And it saves the image. Now, another thing we can do that changes this image completely is change the white point by picking a white point. You'll notice there it just went blue. Here we are more of a yellow. We're going to pick the white point on this column. It cools it down into more of a blue. Now, we could save this image if we wanted to. And save it under whatever legend or file naming standard that works for you. Of course, you can always reset. But there are other settings in here that can be used. This, as you can see, this menu here changes the settings on what's available here. We're just scratching the surface. But maybe this will give you an idea of what the Indigo renderer can do.